Starlink. What is the purpose? The amazing mind of Elon Musk, together with his team, have produced reusable rockets, electric cars, Hyperloop transit systems, and Mars colonies. And now we have Starlink, a creation of SpaceX to look out for. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I will be talking extensively about Starlink and what exactly is its purpose of creation. Make sure you watch till the end. SpaceX is a private spaceflight company that designs, manufactures, and launches spacecraft and rockets. Its creation is linked to the obsession with Mars by CEO Elon Musk. Of course, that's a joke. Well, Starlink is a satellite network that is being developed for low-cost internet in distant places. The goal is to launch over 12,000 low-cost satellites for better internet network services, which will be available all over the globe. And there's more. Starlink is offering to set up a mega constellation of satellites in the Earth's orbit, which would create access to a faster and more reliable cable-like internet, unlike traditional satellite internet that is unreliable with connection, struggle with high latency, and poor internet services in distant locations. It all goes back eight years ago, when Elon Musk probed the Federal Communication Commission concerning his plan to test a global broadband system. Then two years after in September, an application for satellite broadband, which he named Starlink, was filed. Right now, there are 2,600 inactive satellites and 1,459 satellites in orbit of the Earth. To attain the anticipated coverage of SpaceX's goal, 4,425 satellites have to be in orbit, which means more rockets, more fuel, and more money. Its scheduled year of activation is the year 2024, and if launched, we should expect satellite broadband with low latency present in the area that has been tagged for poor services. Imagine going on an exploration in the mountains, forest, and the sea, where the internet services are usually a mess, and soon becomes nothing to worry about, whether it is needing a Google map or trying to contact people, as Starlink is soon to have it all covered. It will also be used for future similar works on Mars. Let me take you through the first two successful launches of Starlink, which took place on the 22nd of February of 2018 at the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Both were demo satellites named Tintin A and Tintin B and were launched as subordinate payloads on a Falcon 9 rocket. The main payload was the PAS Earth Imaging Radar Satellite operated by Hisdesat, a Spanish company. These demo satellites were responsible for the gathering of data that have made plans for Starlink progressive. They are test satellites that were used to demonstrate how workable Starlink will be. Although there are no recent plans to use them as a part of Starlink's satellite constellation, their test run was a success to the buildup. After the successful launch of the two demo Starlink satellites, FCC approved the application of satellite broadband services. Which, in simpler terms, it means if Starlink is officially launched and functioning accordingly, it can be offered in the US and SpaceX can release charges for public use. The approval from the Federal Communication Commission serves as an important step achieved for this project, which includes the permission to fly 12,000 satellites to 30,000 satellites to be operated at lower altitudes. If achieved, it would be record-breaking, since only up to 9,000 artificial satellites have been launched in history, and 2,000 are currently orbiting the Earth, as reported by the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. The ambition of Elon Musk increased after the success of the demo satellites, and the goal elevated to being a part of the $1 trillion internet connectivity market. On May the 23rd of 2019, the first 60 Starlink satellites were successfully launched with the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which reached the operational altitude of 340 miles, a suitable distance to be pulled back to Earth by atmospheric drag once they die off, so they don't become space junk. Now to how it works. A single Starlink satellite weighs 500 pounds, which can be roughly compared to the size of a table. Traveling 47% faster than in fiber optic, it is designed to work by beaming information through the vacuum of space, compared to internet signals that work through electric cables and must be physically connected. Due to the distance normal satellites internet have with the Earth, which is about 22,236 miles, it makes them a high latency satellite, and this means there will be time delays in sending and receiving data, 
which in turn means slow internet. A closer satellite will produce low latency, and that means faster internet and faster delivery of information around the Earth, all the way to remote locations. Starlink is released at an operating altitude of 340 miles, which is 65.4 times less than the distance of a normal satellite, and can sometimes be seen without a telescope. The distance between the Earth and the Starlink satellite puts its latency level at a very low point. The Starlink network is said to deliver minor internet coverage after 400 satellites were fully operational. And for moderate coverage, 800 satellites have to be up and running. With 4,425 satellites already permitted for orbiting by the FCC, and 1,459 already active and functioning, beaming internet coverage is deployed from the satellite to the surface below. For full coverage, over 30,000 satellites are needed. What then will be the cost for installation? Planning is still in place, and with so much to have organized and completed, the cost of installation is still unverified in some countries. But estimation data suggests that one-time cost for installation should be between $99 for a monthly subscription and $499 for the Starlink kit, which consists of a Wi-Fi router, mounting tripod, and a terminal used to connect the satellites. As of February, a deposit of $100 can be made for a pre-order of Starlink, which is available in six countries. In the UK, $89 is for a monthly subscription and $439 is for the Starlink kit. In other countries, a total of $600 will be accepted for payment for both subscription and Starlink kit. The countries where it is available include the Northern US, the United Kingdom, Southern Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and Mexico. Other countries like Italy, India, Spain, Japan, and the Caribbean are soon to have access to Starlink. How much will the project cost? From test runs to the real launches and the completion of the project, the estimated amount the project is going to cost is a total of $10 billion. Later in December, SpaceX won $885 million in federal subsidies for the expansion of Starlink. But the competition disagrees because they speculate unproven technology is being used for Starlink manufacturing. Next thing you want to know is, how fast is the Starlink internet going to be? With the progress made behind, we are looking at an internet speed of one gigabit per second if all 12,000 Starlink spacecraft are launched and fully operational. While being tested, the download and upload speeds were about 40 megabits per second and 15 megabits per second in the northern part of the United States where most of its work is being tested. With traditional satellites that produce 4G and even 5G networks have no speed problem except in distant and remote locations. This coverage problem is what led to the initial plan of creating Starlink, so that there is a massive amount of internet broadband anywhere on Earth. As of 2020, its fastest recorded speed by a user in Utah was 215 megabits per second and 209.17 megabits per second by another user in New York. In unfavorable conditions like high winds, snow, and even freezing temperatures, its internet speed still measured up to 175 megabits per second. For an invention as huge as these, there will be problems just as big. An example was at the initial launch of Tintin A and Tintin B. A pearl string of light could be seen by sky watchers. This pearl string of light was so bright that it got both SpaceX and other astronomical communities in disarray. It was new and unknown, and of course will be a reason to panic. There were concerns on how future images would be produced when viewed with a highly sensitive telescope. Another report is the interference of radio astronomers which could affect Starlink's radio-based antennas. A major problem the International Astronomical Union had was with the design. They urged that designers, policymakers, and deployers work with the astronomical community to have all plans and procedures concerning the impact of satellite constellations analyzed and understood before being launched. The problems didn't end, and it worsened in September 2019 when an announcement was made by the European Space Agency that it had to direct its AOLIS satellite to undertake evasive maneuvers to prevent crashing into one of the Starlink satellites in the Mega Constellation. It was reported by the US military that the chance of a collision is 1 in 10,000, and a maneuver will not be necessary 
although SpaceX is still investigating the problem and will initiate whatever corrective measure is necessary. Goodwill was made by SpaceX in conjunction with the district superintendent, Scott Murray, who agreed to assist families with no network connection and areas with poor services. A rural school district in Texas will be getting internet access and a total of 135 families will be receiving free Starlink internet. Later in December, a remote indigenous community called Pekanjikum of about 3,000 individuals in northwestern Ontario were connected to Starlink and were introduced to SpaceX by the CEO of FSET, Dave Brown. Pekanjikum was almost cut off from socialization as citizens struggled with education and healthcare until the installment of Starlink internet services. A statement made by Dave Brown emphasized how the people of Pekanjikum have grown technologically without having to move while still being remote because of the application of Starlink. Another growing society is the workforce at SpaceX. As of May 2020, there were about 8,000 employed staff compared to February, which increased to 10,000. With a lot of work to be done, there are vacancies available on the website. There are future plans to attach Starlink satellite internet to moving vehicles, not just vehicles, but also trains, planes, and even ships. All these are included in the application filed by SpaceX to the FCC. It gets even wilder. Remember at the beginning I mentioned the purpose of its creation? So what's the bigger purpose? The trillion dollar connectivity business will fund Elon Musk to bring humans to Mars to build a civilization that makes us a truly interplanetary species. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to smash that like button and do not forget to subscribe. Also, let's see your views on Starlink and what you think in the comment section below.